I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to talk about the immediate window. Now, the immediate window is something that a lot of you guys have asked me about. And at first, when you start programming, it can be a little bit confusing. Now, as you become a Microsoft Access developer, you're going to use the immediate window more and more. And so what I wanted to do today was to show the top things that you can do with the immediate window. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so first of all, a big thanks to the team at Microsoft who created this revamped Northwind Traders uh, database. I'm using the starter edition right now. You can download this. I showed this in a previous video and it is super cool. So you can see if I open the navigation pane on the left here, there are lots of shortcuts to different objects and things like that and you can explore those, but it opens to an orders form and that's what we'll be using today. Now using control G, now control G you should burn it into your memory. Uh, control G is going to open the immediate window from anywhere in the application, whether you're looking at a table or a form or code or design or whatever, it's going to open the immediate window. Uh, and so you can go ahead and use Control G and that will open this little pane that you see here and you can resize it. And the immediate window can also be opened through the view edit, but it will not be available as a selection in the window drop down as you see there because it is not a separate window. Um, but let's get started. So the first thing you need to know about the immediate window is the question mark. And that is really asking for a return value. Now you can ask for just about any kind of expression you want. I typed in date there, which is a built in function and that's going to return that date that you see there. I can put in 1 plus 1, I can put in 2 plus 2, whatever I want to have there, I can do that, so long as it can be evaluated by the system. So I can even put in a string here with the question mark at the front and ask it to evaluate a concatenated string as you see here, hello world. Um, that would be something that you might see in some code or you might want to try to evaluate some uh, controls and things and so we'll do that now. So the next thing that uh, is really great about the immediate window is the ability to also get values from expressions. And so if I open this order details table, uh, I clicked on one of the orders in the list there and it opened the order detail and I'm going to right click on that order detail uh, form and I'll pick some field here uh, I guess I'll take the order date. So say I wanted to know uh, what the order date was that was open on screen at the moment. And that's a super uh, useful thing when you're coding because sometimes you don't really know what's uh, being displayed or why it's being displayed. And so we can ask for that value. Um, sometimes you might have a hidden field or something as well. And so we can do our expression, which you guys have probably seen in previous videos. So I'll do forms, form order details, order date, and it gives me the complete date value that is in that field at that moment that the user has it open or you have it open for testing or whatever. Now this can also be super handy for getting values from subforms as well. Just to show the power of it, uh, you might have some function or something or, or you have a subform open and you're wondering what the what the value is actually in that field. And you can do that. Uh, I'm going to copy the uh, form order details there. And I'm going to ask for the subform and then, and then the value from the field on the subform. Because you can also do that as well. Uh, so here we can, we can do that. So we'll do forms, form order details, s form order details. That's the name of the subform. And then I'll get the quantity field there. And, and that's going to give me 18 and you'll see that's the row that's highlighted by the little uh, selector there on the left. If I change the selector to a different row and I run the same uh, <clears throat> request in the immediate window, I'm going to get 41. And that is exactly what we want to see there and that can make it really, really uh, easy to get values and things from your forms uh, and, and that's really great. And you can also run things like 
you know, D lookups and you can run, you know, DSOM and all kinds of things on tables. You can do all kinds of things with uh, the request uh, using the question mark. And so you can see that's really, really handy. And if you start developing in a serious way in Microsoft Access, you'll find that you'll be using uh, the question mark with the immediate window a lot. And that is really great. Now you can also run commands with the immediate window. And so if I take that question mark away, um, then you can, you can do things uh, like set values. So I'm going to say now that unit price is actually 11. I'm going to take that uh, question mark away. And I hit, I hit uh, enter on that. And you'll see it doesn't update right away. But if I click off of that row, or if I click in another field, you'll see that the value updates. And so there we go, a tab off of there, and it does update to 11. Now that's, a, that's updated by code. So the, the field value was updated in the, in the record source. And so the, the subform picked that up um, after I tabbed off of the row there. And so if I update to 12, I can do the same thing. I can, uh, you know, I hit enter and then, and then <clears throat> go to another record here. You can see it's updating on, on the left there, the little pencil. And so as you can see, uh, using the immediate window to set a value is also very handy. And uh, so I'll go back and I'll set that back to 10 and hit enter and that will set the value back in the database there and we are good to go. So the next thing we can do is we can run commands. And so um, just like we set a value using an expression just now, uh, we can uh, execute a command by just typing in the row of code that we would like to execute. And so in this case, I'll do a message box. I'll say, you know, wow, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. Um, you know, and I'll put some arguments on there just like we would for a message box in our code. And if I hit enter on that, you'll see, hey, it pops up in the application as if it was running in the application. And so that's really cool. Um, and that's something that is really, really great for uh, using the uh, immediate window. And just like I mentioned before about how you could use a question mark with the lookup to get a single value, uh, you could also run some code to update the database directly. And so let's take a look here. So this is 18, uh, 18 bucks for this uh, black tea with a blend of cardamom, ginger, cloves, and cinnamon and we can update that. Let's update that using our immediate window. So instead of going and creating a new query with an update and everything, you can actually just type in here. You could do do, do command.runsql or you could use current db.execute, um, whatever you, way you wanted to do it. Um, so in this case, I'll use uh, do command.runsql and here we go. We'll do an update product set unit price equal to 28 where product equals one, and we'll hit enter. And there we go, we've got, uh, you are about to update one row. We'll say yes to that. And you'll see in the grid uh, grid view just behind here for the uh, table, uh, you can see it's 28 bucks now. So that's gone up according to inflation, which is happening like crazy apparently. And uh, there we go. So you can do an update on your database um, using the immediate window. It saves you time of creating an object just to do one little you know, update or one little insert into a database and, and that makes it very, very handy. Okay, so that's great for our order details form, uh, but what if we wanted to do stuff with actual code and you'll find that using the immediate window with actual code is also very handy. So there's our immediate window. You can see I can resize it. I can get rid of it if I want. I can control G to open it again, uh, or I can, uh, you know, use the view immediate window uh, in in the drop down there. And so that's very very uh, important because you might be coding and you might be wondering, well, how can I get back into the immediate window? to test something out. And so the immediate window is one of the best places that you can test uh, functions and things that are in your modules. Just be aware that you cannot test functions and things in your form code directly from here. Okay, so let's create a new subroutine. Uh, we'll call it check unit price. It has no arguments, so I just put check unit price and we'll put a comment at the top saying checks unit price. 
And there's our expression that we used before, first to retrieve a value and then set a value. That's the forms, form order details, S form order details, unit price. Uh, we're going to use that in our subroutine and we're going to have a simple variable here. We'll say uh, dim currency price as currency and then we'll set that equal to whatever is evaluated by the expression. And I can paste that in there and that's going to load that variable there with the number that is in the field uh, currently on that form. And so uh, I could put a message box. We could you know, make a message box saying the current price is, and here is our price, and we'll do an information message box with price as the title of the box or the caption. And that, that's a subroutine that is in a module, so I'm going to save it now, and I'll just save it as mod order stuff. And so that'll be our module for our orders. And uh, there we go. We've got a subroutine that we can use in the immediate window if we wanted to, or we could call it from anywhere in our application. So let's go ahead and open one of our orders. So there we go. Let's open this one. This is. Uh, uh, worldwide importers and uh, we're, we've got this coffee row here and let's see if our little subroutine can get the value from the form and so normally we would put our cursor in and hit the go button there but instead we're gonna call this from the immediate window uh, so with a subroutine uh, we can just type in the name and then a space and then the arguments or in this case there's no arguments we just type it in and there's our message box. So it says the price is 46. And so that's a great way to run uh, subroutines that you have in your module code. Uh, you can call it right from the immediate window. Um, I've had to do it many times, you know, say some batch procedure got screwed up and the last subroutine had to be rerun. Um, I would often just open the immediate window and execute it directly from there so that I didn't have to rerun the whole program again and go through all of the steps leading up to that point. Okay, so let's do a function here. I called the function unit price check and I'll make that a currency function. I pasted in the two rows from our subroutine uh, to load that variable and then I'm gonna set unit price check equal to current price uh, or currency price at the end here and uh, that should just give us the value back this time instead of doing a message box. Now this time what we can do is because it's a function we have to use the question mark because we're asking for the value back uh, and so we could go question mark unit price check. Now if there were arguments you would have to put brackets and then put the arguments in there um, but in this case because there's no uh, arguments we can just put the name of the function so there you go it's 46 and that is exactly what we want to see there I changed the row just now and we'll rerun it and there we've got 10 for our syrup but there's more we can actually use the immediate window in conjunction with our programming and this is a breakpoint maybe you guys haven't worked with breakpoints yet maybe you have but that's where uh, we can stop the code as it runs and so we can see what's happening and with the immediate window we can call our function so if I put my cursor on the end and hit enter there um, you'll see that the code starts and we're retrieving that value um, and one of the things that we can do while it's running is we can say well what's the value of a particular variable and we can use the question mark with the variable name and we'll get the value for that now you can also hover over the value just like I did there in order to see the value. Okay, so we'll hit go again on our, on our toolbar so that it completes after we stopped it there. And you can see now it outputs the, the actual value, which was 10. Uh, and so we've executed it and returned the value in the immediate window. And just for good measure, I removed the breakpoint on the left there. And there is our code. So one of the next things that you can do with the immediate window that's very very handy is to review debug.print statements. Now debug.print is really really handy. Uh, you can put debug.print anywhere in your code. So I'm going to change that from a message box to debug.print. 
and I removed the other arguments off the end of that because we were just printing out a single statement here. So now if I save that and I go back to our line here, I'll copy that check unit price. We'll scroll down to the bottom and paste that in and hit enter. And this time when I hit enter, you'll see that we get the current price is 10, which is what we saw in the message box before. And now we're outputting it into this immediate window, uh, which is a great way to do your troubleshooting in your code. And those are my top picks for useful things that you can do with the immediate window. Need time collection for your team out in the field? Make sure to check out my Bill Zone system. The link is in the description.